Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works. Today we're on flat white again. Exciting times, we now have a fuel tank and a new pump, so let's get it in. Pretty excited today because we've now got our replacement fuel tank for the cappuccino. We've also got a brand new fuel pump to go in it. Um, we haven't gone with a crazy size pump because these things use very little fuel even when they're screaming their head off. So we've just actually gone for a replacement Denso pump. Uh, we've got that via spares box so who get all their pumps and stuff through PAT. Uh, they're both pretty cool guys to deal with. So we're gonna whack this pump in and then we're gonna put it in the tank before we put it into the car. Um, I don't know, you, some of you guys probably would have noticed the screws were already loose. Um, the guy we got the tank from actually removed the pump and took photos of it internally for us before we purchased it. Uh, that was really cool of him. Um, super excited to get this in and potentially we may even try and put the transmission back in and see if it'll run by itself without needing deathly carby cleaner or brake cleaner. Got a new filter pickup as well because looking at that one, it's pretty crusty. It's slightly larger, this replacement one. Um, this, this isn't actually a cappuccino pump as such. It was just listed as a, as a Denso replacement pump, but luckily the, the pickup is very similar. Um, just be very careful to make sure you take all these blocking plugs out before you go fitting stuff up. Handy little trick when putting these, uh, the filters and the retaining clips on. Just put the retaining clip on the pump. This one's actually not too bad to do, but I normally just use a, a really small quarter inch deep socket on the ratchet, sit it on, push it down, and then it's on. Then you don't have to use sort of long nose pliers or anything weird. It's just pretty simple, just straight on and push it, and then it's on. Then we've got our rubber isolator. This is the uh, cappuccino specific one. We're gonna reuse that because it fits straight on the pump. You do get an install kit here with the pump which actually comes with some clamps and another isolator base plate. But because the cappuccino one's actually specific to this mounting bracket, we're just gonna reuse that one. So that's all been pretty simple. Just giving the O-ring a quick lube, I'll give it another spray before we go in. Why not? Don't wanna put it in dry. Just a single screw on the base. That's tight enough, you don't have to go crazy with it. So that's our new pump fitted. Last thing to do before we put it in the tank is just plug it in. Obviously, as I mentioned, it was a direct replacement, so you don't have to go changing that plug. Uh, cool thing to note though, it does actually come with an electrical terminal in the kit, even though we didn't use it. So we'll uh, definitely store that one for later on for the in the spares kit. But we'll uh, continue whacking this one in. We've got our tank completely assembled. We've been quite lucky actually in that this tank was supplied more or less complete with all the uh, air fuel separator and all the hard lines already on it. So basically that just means we've all, all just got to plumb this in back to the car. But unfortunately the task of pulling it out of the car is not as simple as you'd hope. Um, quickly looking at it, it, it seems that we have to actually drop the whole rear subframe out of the car. Um, it's probably not quite as hard on this particular one because we've already got the tail shaft out and the exhaust out. So we're gonna whack this in, put the subframe back in, and depending on how we go for time, we may even try and get the transmission back in today.
there's no rust on the body at all. Like the body, that whole cavity is mint. Like if it was a flood car, you'd think there'd be some sort of corrosion in this sealed area up in here or even on the top of the tank. There's no dirt or mud or anything that you would think it's a flood or a tsunami car. It's just weird that things are rusting, but I think it's just down to the mice and rats that have contaminated the car. So pretty happy that this all looks really good and sound because these do rust in this kind of area here as well. So stoked that this one's not cooked. Wow. That's what's left of the fuel sender. Well, there's your problem. It's like someone's dumped metal shavings in there and then buckets of water. I can't even understand how that would have happened. It's a Titanic fuel tank. As you guys would have seen, the previous tank's just completely cooked. So luckily we've got this one, which is in much better condition. Um, fitting it's gonna be fairly simple. Being that it's empty, it's actually quite light. So we're basically gonna do it in the, the opposite of the way we remove that tank. So we're gonna put this uh, back corner bolt in first, just finger tight. That's enough to actually support the weight of the tank while we put the, the top breather line in and the, uh, the fuel sender and the fuel pump wiring. Then once we've got all that in place, we'll uh, just lift it up and put the other three bolts in. Uh, then fill it neck on and our uh, supply and return and vent hoses. Once that's all done, we'll just put the rear subframe in and then I'm going to actually pull the fuel line off the rail end and we'll um, turn the ignition on a couple of times and, and purge it once we put some new fuel in this tank. Um, seeing how bad that the tank is, I don't know what the fuel lines are going to be like. Um, hopefully the corrosion is limited to this and looking or limited to the previous tank not this one obviously this one's good but looking at how bad that old one was internally i don't think that that pump actually would have been able to pump any junk further forward i'd say it sat for a long time to get that bad so we're going to throw this one in and then yeah flush the system and hopefully we're going to be sweet then um i've decided too that we're not going to actually try and start it we're not going to put the box back in today um it's basically just creating more work for us for no reason so we're going to stick to the original plan and we'll get this back in and the next episode, we'll actually rip all the front end out of that, including the engine. And then we're going to do a new clutch time belt kit, water pump, head service, including a uh, metal head gasket. Got new head bolts and all sorts of stuff to go back into it. So it should be pretty good. And uh, hopefully it'll go to one step forward to making it a bit more reliable and, and easier to, to just go and enjoy rather than potentially going and stopping and dying on the side of the road or at the track or whatever, as the case may be. Um, it's a couple of days now before the import laws are changing in Australia, so in a few days I'm actually going to send a letter away and hopefully we get, it'll mean we can register that. So fingers crossed, but we don't know how that's going to pan out yet. So that's also the other reason we're not going crazy on it just yet until we know where we're at. So we'll throw the tank in and keep on going.
It's taken a fair while today, but we've managed to swap out the fuel tank. Uh, that obviously included the replacement fuel pump. And we've just primed the key and all the fuel systems working. Um, we actually left the return line off deliberately under the car, but the return line must actually be below the full line on the tank. So when we put, um, well, basically when we filled the tank up, it went above the return line hole. And then it basically just meant the, the tank was gravity draining. So uh, we'd originally planned to just um, cycle the key a few times and see what the return line looked like. But um, when we actually just visually inspected it, there was no rust or anything in that return line at all. So. I think we're pretty good to go. Um, one thing I do want to do before we actually get it running is, is replace the fuel filter though. Um, I haven't managed to find one of those yet, so um, we'll jump on that and have a bit of a look around and see who's got one in stock or, or, or what the filter actually is. Um, this actually has, I'd say, the original filter. It's definitely a genuine Suzuki filter, so um, those part numbers probably won't help us a lot unless we end up getting an actual genuine one. But Today, pretty happy again with the result. We've got the tank in, we can hear the pump priming. So we're one step closer to getting this thing back together and running. Um, I did mention earlier that we might, we may have been gonna put the transmission back in. Um, I decided against that because it's basically just making more work for us. So next time we're gonna drop the engine out, which will be on the subframe. Um, I've now got a lot of the gaskets and seals and stuff to actually service this engine. So we'll rip the cylinder head off and send that to the machine shop. Um, while that's away, we'll, we'll clean the block face and then basically as soon as, the, um, as soon as the cylinder head comes back, we'll reassemble it. But while it's away also, we'll put the, a new remain, new crank seal, new water pump, all the stuff that we can do while we're waiting and basically have it ready to drop the head straight back on. So pretty keen for that to happen. But until then, we'll see you guys next time.